Welcome to the BBC School Report at Hamsworth Academy. Today, I'll be talking to you about rowing at Hamsworth Academy, the school policy at Hamsworth Academy, and science at Hamsworth Academy. Firstly, I will be talking to you about how rowing is beneficial for students at Hampstead Academy and in London. Now, here's Nazir at the scene. I think placing rowing in, on school cur curriculum will ultimately have a positive effect. I can't ever see a situation where rowing would be a sort of official curriculum, if that's what you mean, a sort of national curriculum. I mean, I guess... The, what we'd want is sport generally to be even more part of the national curriculum than it is. Um, but if you're asking, is is rowing good as uh, something to do at school? Then it's fantastic. Um, as a uh, an addiction to have between the ages of 13 and 18, rowing is fantastic, and it is addictive for the right body shape, for the right people who love being out on the water, being outdoors working as part of a team with their mates it's it's a brilliant brilliant sport and you'll find loads of 15 16 17 year olds who are sort of dedicated to their sport they think about what they're eating they think about their exercise they're thinking about getting stronger and fitter and working as a team those are all really invaluable lessons uh, on top of the other lessons that you might do at school should um, more olympic star sports be placed on the curriculum should more Olympic style sports be put into the curriculum? I mean, I think there's an argument that Olympic sport is probably different to some other sports. I mean, um, everybody seems to do football at school. Everybody seems to do running of some description. Um, and then after that, there's, you know, an array of sports that you might or might not get introduced to. And what London 2012 has taught us is that actually if you find the right sport for the right person, they can be the best in the world at them. And so I would have argued that at school, actually, you should be introduced to a whole raft of different sports and find the one that you're best at. There are examples, uh, Helen Glover I can think of in rowing, uh, Lizzie Yarnold in winter sport, in skeleton. These are people who started off in one sport and then years later they got talent ID'd and picked and put into another and in a very short period of time they went from learning a sport to winning an Olympic gold medal at it. And if you find the right thing that you love and you're very good at, you can get to the top actually very quickly. Um, I do think Rowan's very beneficial students, um, definitely in the kind of state school that we're in. So it's kind of brand new facilities, a brand new skill, they're developing something new and just kind of got a chance to get out on the water and have a bit of fun with their friends, really. I just think it's really important to make sure that all types of students have access to every single sport. And rowing is something we haven't really done here before, so I think to give them the opportunity to go and try something new and gain new skills. Um, and so far, we've had a lot of students that really want to continue with rowing afterwards, and that, for me, that, that's why we do it. Thank you, Nizia, for that lovely report. Now, we'll be talking about how science experiments is beneficial and helps students to learn. Experiments are different at HA because this is a brand new academy. It means that all of the equipment we've been able to buy is new and up to date and specific to the current curriculum. Experiments help students to fully understand science. Science can sometimes be quite abstract and have abstract ideas. Um, to show these, those ab abstract ideas in a physical form is very, very helpful for students' learning. Not all experiments are dangerous, only a few experiments are dangerous. Um, here, obviously health and safety is very important, so we try to keep the experiments as safe as possible. But in the end, the small dangers that might happen with an experiment are far outweighed by the ability for students to learn much more from science by doing experiments. For key stage three, quite often you do an experiment pretty much every lesson, uh, particularly for the chemistry subjects, um, maybe a little bit less for the physics subjects. Um, normally every other lesson for key stage four and key stage five. 
Uh, I think a science experiment day would be very good. I think it would give students access to lots of different experiments that they might not do in their regular lessons, especially things like methane bubbles, which is always very popular, thermic reactions, experiments like that that are not necessarily part of a specific lesson, but are very, very entertaining and give students a wider idea of what science experimentation is. Finally, we'll be looking at the school uniform and all of its qualities. Um, we have this uniform because it's an aspiration of the academy that every single student is highly professional and that includes not just their attitudes but the way in which they're dressed and to have a professional uniform which is like a, a mini suit um, which shows their professionalism prepares people for, for, for working for the, and for the life of work. When you don't have a uniform you can often cause problems between students where there's bullying and other issues. So it's a really good way of equalising all students and everybody gets treated the same and it's highly professional. I think the colours were chosen by the sponsors. So I think they represent the a mixture of the WCIT, the Worshipful Company of, I, of Information Technologists, and the Mercer's Company. So that claret colour and the blue colour um, and the grey are a mixture of their corporate sponsors colours incorporated in our academy colours. Thank you for watching BBC School Report at Hampstead Academy. Goodbye and have a lovely day.